Uh, in the first lecture, I gave you guys an over overview of the computer vision uh, as how we will start from uh, basic image processing Okay, then we'll move on to um, vision processing, and then vision based on deep networks, and, and so that's the state of the art. But before we can understand some of the later things, we have to have a good idea of the basic image processing, right? So today I'll cover even, even the most basic things. Uh, for example, how do we load an image? How do we make it brighter? Uh, how do we increase the contrast? Uh, so very, very basic things over here, right? So uh, the programming that we'll be doing in our course, some of the programming will be in C Sharp, some will be in Python. Okay. So don't worry, along the way I'll also give you enough review so that even if you did not know any of the languages, you're still very comfortable with understanding, modifying, creating your own code, right? So I'll start with C Sharp, this is very similar to Java, and show you how do we load an image, for example, right? Okay. So keep in, keep in mind images are basically 2D array of pixels, okay? Uh, so when we take a digital picture, okay, a pixel is like a dot, okay? So for example, if you had a thousand by thousand, uh, thousand pixels in each row, thousand rows over here, so if you had a thousand by thousand image, uh, each one of these pixels, so this is what we call the pixel, is further divided into a red part, a green part, and a blue part. I do have the green color, but I don't have the red color. So, okay, uh, so this is, uh, let's say this is red, this is blue, and this is green. Okay. So a common format for storing the uh, images is like a 24-bit color. Okay, so 24-bit color is a popular format where we assign like 8 bits to red, 8 bits to green, and 8 bits to blue. Okay, so RGB format. So often we refer to this as RGB. Okay, so uh, let's pick a simple example. Let's say we have a digital camera. It's capable of uh, taking a picture which is thousand by thousand pixels, right? So if you take a look at the memory involved, uh, each pixel is further 24 bits, like three bytes, right? Thousand by thousand becomes a million. Uh, so it's basically three megapixel, oh, sorry, uh, one megapixel, but three megabyte will be the, me the memory needed uh, to store this picture. So storage needed equal to three megabytes. Okay. Um, from processing point of view also, if we wanted to enhance this image, Okay, as you can see, we have to do one million operations. So it's, uh, and this is one megapixel is, you know, very, very, uh, it's not a high resolution image by any, any means, right? If, we, if you had a 20 megapixel camera, you can see the processing, the memory becomes uh, 20 times more, right? Okay, uh, so anyway, so first concept you should know is that when we store images, we don't store them in the bitmap format. Okay, uh, images are stored in compressed format to conserve memory. Okay, so we have different compression schemes. Okay, so different compression schemes.
Okay, so for example, one of them is JF, JF, Ng, TIF, and so on. Okay, each one of the, these is suited for a certain kind of image. Okay, for example, if you take a look at GIF, GIF uh, produces better compression. So it produces better compression for lines, curves uh, type of data. So for example, if you wanted to display you know, some kind of a graph uh, with very few colors, then GIF will do a very, very good job of compression. Okay, GIF uses the same, remember you guys use the zip file. Uh, the zip algorithm is basically, it's called LZW, libs, uh, Lemkel, Ziv, Belch. These are the three authors who created the very famous zip algorithm. Uh, so GIF is also uses LZW algorithm. Okay. Uh, so this is a lossless compression. Meaning, if you compress it and then you decompress it, you get 100% the original data. Okay. Um, However, if you have like mountain sceneries or you know a picture of a person where there are many colors involved, many detail involved, then GIF does not do as good of a job of a compression. So for those type of cases, JPEG is another compression algorithm. Okay. It's a very interesting algorithm, but we can spend half a semester on the algorithm itself. Okay, uh, we'll take it for granted in this course. Uh, somebody will give us the picture already compressed in JPEG format. Uh, but for us to be able to display it on a screen uh, or in an application, we do have to decompress it. Okay, uh, so I'll show you how do we decompress it in a, in a few minutes. Okay, but uh, JPEG does a bit, does a good job. So good job of compression. When detail and many colors are involved. Okay, so that's why pretty much all digital cameras will not use GIF, right? Because it will, your memory card will run out of memory very quickly. It's not doing, if, if, if our original is three megabyte, and if we had a lot of detail over here, a lot of colors, you apply GIF, it will only compress it to two megabyte, okay? But if we apply, apply JPEG, it will reduce it to perhaps 500 mega, uh, so, uh, sorry, half a megabyte, okay, 500 kilobytes, okay? Um, uh, anyway, majority of the time that uh, insane vaping and TIFF have other there are variations of compression idea for certain kind of images. They work better. Okay. Uh, so now let's talk about uh, somebody took a picture from a digital camera. They gave us a JPEG file. How do we view it? How do we enhance it? How do we do some uh, image processing on it? So. Okay, so let's say on your computer, somewhere on the C drive, in your temp folder, you have some file t1.jpg. Okay, so on a Windows operating system, it will use the JPG extension to store the file, right? Okay, so first I will show you C sharp, then gradually I'll show you the Python code as well. Your first assignment will be recreating. Um, a basic image processing application that I've already created. I will show you all the code. You'll basically recreate it uh, so that you can understand it. I'll give you the important concepts over here. So in C Sharp, there's a class that is already pre-created, uh, which is called Bitmap. OK, 
hey, in the constructor for this class, uh, all you have to do is pass the JPEG file. Okay, so then it will uncompress it, okay, and create a bitmap for us, a two-dimensional bitmap. So, so to give you a, a tiny bit explanation of this type of code, okay, let's say this was the image stored t1.jpg. So you, your C# -sharp code to display this image uh, will look something like this. Okay, you will do bitmap. DMP. In C Sharp, all classes, uh, regardless you wrote them or they were pre created, class name start uppercase. Okay, uh, so bitmap is already a class in the C Sharp library. What library it belongs to, if you simply type bitmap, it will not recognize it. Okay, just like in Java, we have packages. Uh, the equivalent of packages in C Sharp. So just like we have Java packages, is what's called namespaces. Okay, so pretty soon I'll go to the computer and then write this code. But uh, all you have to do is right click on it and okay, you will see an option called quick, quick actions. And then from the quick actions, it will give you some statement using, for example, system.drawing. So that's the namespace in which this bitmap class is already defined. Okay. Uh, anyway, all you do is right click. Uh, so if it's giving you some red squigglies that doesn't recognize it, right click. Quick actions, uh, once you see the using statement, just click on it. It will end up typing this for you using, for example, system.drawing. So you don't have to memorize anything, you know, like I said. As long as you know the name of the class is bitmap with capital B. Okay, right click and if, uh, quick actions, pick the choice. Once it gives you, then create an object of it. In C Sharp, you create an object of a class exactly like Java using the new keyword. Okay, and in the constructor, now you give it the file name. C temp t1.jpg. Okay, uh, now backslash is a problem character in C, in C Sharp, exactly like Java, exactly like C. Uh, so anytime you need a single backslash, because backslash t will mean tab. Otherwise, you will put two backslashes. Okay, or you can also put an at sign over here so that you use a single. But anyway, let's not make it too confusing for right now. So just use two backslashes. Okay, so now this will decompress it and convert it into a bitmap. So once again, bitmap is your 2D array of pixels. Hey, now let's pretend we wanted to display it uh, somewhere, right? So if you created a Windows application, eh, in a minute I'll go to the computer, I'll create it. Okay, uh, it will give you a toolbox so that we can create some kind of a GUI. Okay, there will already be a form over here. Okay, so from the toolbox, what you will do is you will locate a picture box. Okay, you'll click on it and then draw the picture box. Okay, and then from the toolbox, you'll pick a button, you'll draw a button over here. Okay, uh, so these are called controls in general software development, uh, regardless of Java or, or C Sharp or not. Anytime you put a control on a, some kind of a display, like a form as an example, you have to give it some kind of a name and some kind of uh, text property. So for the button, for example, you'll give it a name, btn display as an example, right? Uh, once you put the picture box, you'll give it a name, 
and there's a simple properties window. If you haven't used C sharp before, you'll see you can call it, for example, pick one or pick whatever. Okay, so picture. So this is the picture box. Okay, this is the button. Okay, uh, then the for for the button, you'll give it a text property of let's say display. So whatever you say in the text property appears over here, for example, display. Okay, so now the goal is if somebody clicks on this button, we want it to display some kind of a picture, right? Okay, so you'll double click on the button. Once you double click on the button, it will give you some method over here, void, btn, display. So it will automatically write it for you. Click with a few parameters over here. Begin curly and curly. So, so the idea is somebody clicks, this code gets triggered. Now our job is to read this image file, decompress it, and display it in the picture box, right? So, so uh, all you have to do is once you've convert converted it to a bitmap, which means it's already decompressed it, right? Then you will say pick one dot image equal to BMP. So that's how simple the code is to read a JPEG file, decompress it, and display it in a picture box. Okay. Uh, so that's just simply displaying already uh, an image that you already have. Now let's talk about how do we want, what if we wanted to make this image is too dark. We wanted to make it brighter, we wanted to make it darker, we wanted to resize it, we wanted to rotate it, we wanted to enhance the edges. So this is where the uh, image processing comes into play, right? So now let me gradually give you more info on that. Okay, so let's talk about making this brighter, okay? Um, so as we discussed, the every image is basically a collection of pixels, right? Each has a red component, green component, and a blue component. With a 24-bit color, red has 8-bit value, bit value. Okay, green has 8-bit value and blue has 8-bit value, which means each one of these varies from the lowest value of 000 to a highest value of 111. Okay, if we convert it to a decimal number, this is 0, this is 255. Okay, um, so if the image was taken under very dark conditions, okay, uh, then all we have to do is to every red, green, blue value, add a constant number. So for example, let's pick a pixel over here, some pixel over here, let's say red is 100, green is, let's say 127, blue is, let's say 175, Okay, so those are the values for this particular pixel. Okay, and we wanted to make the whole picture brighter by a value of 10, right? So then all you have to do is add 10 over here, add 10 over here, add 10 over here, and we display the image. So uh, let's write a small function to brighten the image. Okay, suppose somebody gives us a bitmap. Okay, and we return a bitmap. So let's see what kind of code we will write to make the image brighter. Okay, uh, so, so let's pretend somebody has already decompressed the JPEG file. Okay, now what they will do is they will call our function over here. So they will say, for example, BMP equal to 
write an image. They, uh, they'll pass the BMP. And they will also tell us how much to br brighten it by, let's say 10. So let me put one more parameter over here, int, uh, let's say, n bright, meaning a number to brighten the, the, uh, each pixel by that value. Okay. So now our code will look, some, look something like this. Remember the bitmap is just a collection of 2D array of pixels. So we will go in a loop for int i equal to 0, i less than bmp dot width. OK, every bitmap has a width property and a height property. So i plus plus. For int j equal to zero, j less than bmp dot height, and j plus plus. Okay. So first thing we need to do is uh, find out what is the red component of each pixel at position i j. What is the green component? What's the blue component? Right. So your typical code will go something like this int red equal to bmp dot get pixel. Uh, so it has two parameters, of course, ij position. I remember bitmap once again is a collection of these 2D array of pixels. So uh, my i variable is going width-wise. My j variable is going height-wise. So at any pixel, there's a certain i value, certain j value, right? Yep. So I can say i comma yeah. j. Okay, what it does is it gives me the whole pixel, right? And what is pixel further composed of? RGB. RGB. So then you can further say dot r over here. And it will give you the red value. And RGB. So then you can say green equal to same thing, dot g, int blue equal to, same thing, dot b. Okay, then what do we want to do? We want to brighten it by this value, right? N bright over here. So suppose that's 10. Then all we have to do is add 10 to the red value. So you'll say red equal to red plus N bright. Green equal to green plus and bright, and similarly, blue equal to blue plus and bright. And now, what do we have to do? We have to put it back in the pixel, right? So, just like get pixel gives us the pixel, the set pixel will put it back. So now you will say. Uh, BMP dot set pixel and I comma J and color dot from ARGB. If I remember correctly, color is another function because uh, once we put it back, we have to put together, put it. Uh, not RGB individually, but pack it together and put it in the pixel. So this from ARGB basically gives us that capability, so red, green, blue. Okay, and, and that's it. And at the end, once we go through the entire 2D array of our bitmap, then all we have to do is just say return BMP. So now whoever was calling it, so for example, if we read this bitmap BMP uh, t1.jpg, so we decompressed it, then we passed it B2 over here. So this will operate on the bitmap, give us the modified bitmap, and then we display. So now this picture will be the brightened version of the same image. What is the 
is the rate already 255? Very good question. Uh, right. So, uh, <laughs> what, will, what if red was, let's say, before we did this, was two, what you said, 255, or even 250, right? Yeah. If we add 10 to it, it will become 260. So, obviously, that will dis distort the image. So, you should have a check over here. After each one of these, you should check if red is greater than 255, then what should you do to the red? Red equal to 255. 255, set it to the max. Okay, so if we were creating our... Yeah. So we added to brighten, does that mean if we minus, it would, you know, decrease the brightness? If we wanted to make it less bright. So, yeah, is that exactly... Exactly. Yeah. Then you should check for, does it go below zero? Sure. Okay. Uh, I'll be giving you all that code and you'll yeah. see it has already. But the fundamental idea I'm trying to clarify over here. So yeah, absolutely. Well, I'm just saying, we're saying to brighten, we add 10. If we wanted to make it less bright, we could subtract 10. Subtract 10. Okay. Yes, you are correct. Okay. But once you subtract, it might go below zero. Then. You can't do that. Yeah, you can't so have you a negative So you put another value. if statement sure. if it's less than zero, set it to zero. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, anyway, so that's the easy part, brightening an image. Okay. Um, so another, your very first assignment will deal with uh, increasing, uh, well first of all I'll show you all these features uh, through a simple C Sharp application that I've already created. Okay, I'll give you that, all that code, all you have to do is recreate it. Okay, uh, so line by line type it yourself so that your brain works. Uh, don't take, oh yeah, just copy and paste and yeah, it worked. Okay, uh, so once you recreate it, hopefully you'll see, you know, you're doing these kind of things, so it's pretty easy. Okay, uh, one of the things that you will see in the code I'll provide is, like I was mentioning, <coughs> vision processing, image processing, uh, especially when real-time video is involved. Towards the end of the course, we'll play with some videos as well. Okay, uh, It's very important to make it as fast as possible. Okay, Like I said, uh, how many times will we be doing this operation if it's a thousand by thousand pixel? 10,000 times. No. Times three. Uh, outer loop is going thousand times, inner loop is going thousand. It's a million times you're doing these things. Okay. Uh, so, especially if you have, uh, and again, one million is a very, very low resolution image, but if it becomes slightly higher resolution, this will be way too time consuming. <clears throat> okay, so, uh, so the way I showed you this code was written, uh, this is called in C sharp terminology, managed code, meaning um, this is being translated into an intermediate code, which is then being further translated to the machine code. So there's, uh, you know, just like in Java, we have bytecode, which is being interpreted. So not exactly like bytecode, but, but the bottom line is this code will not be as fast as compared to if you wrote it in C language, uh, uh, where it accesses the memory directly, it will be extremely fast. Okay, so one of the neat things about C Sharp compared to Java is, okay, we can write C style code. Meaning, not from syntax point of view, but from execution point of view, which accesses memory directly without having to go through uh, a boundary where the, the uh, uh, it, it checks like a sandbox environment where it checks whether you are accessing a protected memory or not. Okay, um, so uh, Okay, so when you create a project, uh, in C Sharp, okay, you have to mark the project 
as unsafe to be able to access memory directly. Okay, so then I'll take you to save time, I'll take you my, to my computer. So basically, you know, just like in C language, we use pointers. Okay, so here also, we'll create a byte, byte star pointer, for example, right? And we'll make it point to if this is the start of the image. Okay, so we'll make it point to the very first pixel, right? So if I do pointer plus plus, okay, uh, each byte has a separate address in the memory of the computer. So if I was pointing to the R value, now I'm going to move to the G value. If I put pointer plus plus, I will move to the blue value, right? Okay, um, so uh, I'll show you the code on the computer. So just for manipulating the images rather than bmp.getPixel, we can directly go to the pointer level and the code runs literally uh, hundreds of times faster compared to the regular managed code. Okay? Um, the small concept over there is, uh, so, so pretend the R value is stored as a byte because in the memory of the computer, Everything is stored at a, as a byte. Okay, uh, so let's say in our row, we had, I, I'll pick a very simple example. We had, uh, let's make it, uh, give it example, 29 pixels. Okay, so let's pretend in the first row we had 29 pixels, right? So 30 times 3 is 90. So how many bytes will there be then? If I multiply by 3, 87 bytes per row. So if every row has 29 pixels, then as you can see, it will need to store 87 bytes in each row. But the way the computers do to optimize memory accesses, <coughs> they store memory in multiples of four bytes, okay? Uh, so what it will do is, um, what's uh, four, 30 times four, what's uh, 29 times four, so, no, sorry, 87 plus what I, so what it will do is it'll pad it with some extra bytes over here, so that the total is, so we'll add three more bytes over here. So to make it 90 bytes, sorry, 92 bytes. So that the whole thing is divisible by four. Okay, that's again an internal detail. Uh, so if you're using byte arithmetic yourself, meaning you're using pointers to speed up the access, once you go to the end of the row, you have to add another offset meaning whatever was the padding over here before you can access the pixel on the correct pixel on the next row. Okay, uh, I have that in the code, but if you see something extra being added, that's the reason to accommodate the way the computer stores the byte data. Okay, so let me take you to my...